Autism is a lifelong developmental condition that affects the way an individual relates in their environment and their interactions with other people. Statistics indicate that one in 100 people in Australia are on the autism spectrum. It affects almost four times as many boys than girls and 83% of Australians with autism are under 25. So joining us for a chat is the founder and CEO of Autism Awareness Australia, Nicole Rogerson. Lovely to have you here with us, Nicole. Thank you so much for having me. Good. Now, I know that uh, you're actually a, a mother of an autistic child. Can you give us a bit of a background as to why you um, became a strong advocate for awareness, uh, uh, autism awareness? Sure. Australia? I should say he's not a child anymore. He's 23. So <laughs> um, I think I have to call him a man. Yes. <laughs> Always been my baby. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess my work here is I wouldn't have known about autism. And, mm. and if you don't have somebody with autism in your life, you wouldn't know anything about the topic. Mm. And it, it makes sense. And obviously, um, when Jack was diagnosed back in 1999, there wasn't so much of the internet. Uh, Google wasn't around. It was very much uh, floundering to find information mm. about it. So um, I was keen to put together an organisation to make sure not only that we got information to parents, but we got really good quality mm. information, scientifically sound, evidence-based sort of resources to help families rather than them sort of wandering around Google trying to figure out what works. Research says that autism is on the increase. Now, is there an overdiagnosis of autism or are we just becoming better at identifying autism? I think we're just much better at it these days. I think we know what the early warning signs are. We know what it looks like. Um, and, and you've got to remember the importance really is in early intervention. Mm. It's the most critical thing. And I think when, for some families, when you're starting to see some signs and there might be some concern that it could be autism, um, families have kind of got two ways they can go. Um, some, and I'll, I'll admit I was in this category, are sort of head in the sand about it. I'm sure he's fine, it's great, or it's nothing. Um, that's not a very helpful step. Stage denial. <laughs> Can we talk about some of those signs? Like, what what are they? Well, in in Jack's it, look, oftentimes it can be a case of children. It's very hard to get their attention. Um, lack of language and lack of speech is usually one of the first signs, but it's not the only sign. Uh, it can be a child that's very interested in themselves, um, doesn't really seek out peers. Uh, it can be children with unusual sensory responses. Mm -hmm. um, but typically, mm -hmm. having a child assessed doesn't mean, oh my goodness, it's definitely autism. I mean, we don't parents to panic either you know and if their their two-year-old's not talking assume it's all autism but we do know definitively we can diagnose children at 18 months and to two years of age wow. so if we can we should yep. because the earlier they get the help obviously the the greater the outcome and what difference does the, that diagnosis make for for parents at, at that early stage Look, I think for some parents it's obviously it's a devastating diagnosis. I think we have to be honest about that now. Obviously, years later, I look back at it as a proud mum of a proud young man who's very proud that he's autistic. Um, <laughs> he thinks it's his superpower. Um, so, you know, I, the way I look at it now, 20 years later, is very different than how I looked at it when it was my three-year-old. Mm -hmm. But I think the job of, of us in the autism community really has to be to support younger mums who are going through that stage and young parents who are going through that stage, um, because you will get through it. Um, children with autism can learn and make great gains um, but we need to intervene. We need to do the work to ensure that happens. And is there enough support for families with, do you feel in Australia, for families who have children with autism? Look, in short, I want to say no, but I'll, I'll hedge that by saying we're a lot better than we used to be. The rollout of the National Disability Insurance Scheme has just been life-changing for many families. In what way? Oh, there's finally funding for intervention that can mm -hmm. that can support kids. For for so many years, the only access to early intervention and educational supports were for families who could afford it. Yeah, but that's right because it is expensive. I've heard Very some expensive. of the therapies that the kids have to go through are, re are really expensive. Well, so they're expensive because they're intensive. Yeah. Right. And so, yeah. how how do families who don't have the funds um, get by or help their children? For years, they literally didn't, mm -hmm. and and that was probably very much the work behind Autism Awareness Australia when we started, which was lobbying the government to realise that, hang on a second, there's a chunk of these kids in Australia who are not getting the help that they need. They're actually going to be a larger burden on society over the years. Mm. Um, if you, apart from the humanitarian side of it, we should be looking at helping kids just purely from an economic point of view. Mm. And what does the intervention look like these days? Look, still the best evidence-based intervention is behavioural uh, interventions. So we want speech and language therapy and helping kids with uh, behavioural and social skills. They still remain the best quality um, intervention that we know of. Mm. What, is the, 
What is the best way for people that, like myself, don't have much uh, to do with autism, like I don't actually know anyone with autism, um, what is the best way for us to treat families and or children with autism? Is it to ignore the issue? Is it to, you know, treat them in a special way? Um, what's the most helpful sort of... I think you can kind of be led by who it is. It, de it depends. Remember, autism is such a broad spectrum. Mm. I mean, you would be at uni with people with autism. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just not close, <laughs> close friends, yeah. I'm not yeah. making any jokes about the engineering department. <laughs> uh, but um, but it, it really depends on the individual. It depends on the, the severity of their autism, how a family mm. talk about it. In my family, we talk about it constantly. <laughs> and we make light of it. You probably it. joke about it. We yeah. joke about it all the time, um, constantly accusing one another of being autistic. Um, <laughs> But that's because we have fun with it because we can. You know, we've had the benefit, and I guess I would say I've had the benefit of having a son who responded to treatment. He did very well. Mm. He's, he's had a great outcome. Um, autism doesn't dominate our family. I know that sounds crazy when I'm sitting here on your television show talking to you about autism. But so it doesn't get better. It's a lifelong journey. It's a lifelong journey, and it gets significantly better. I, right. I think mm. I wish that's the one thing I could say. With intervention, with therapy. With intervention and mm. with help, it can get significantly better. Now, for some families families whose children remain severely affected, um, they will have a very hard time for the rest mm. of their lives. But again, the National Disability Insurance Scheme uh, is here. So finally, there's financial support to be able to get help to families who otherwise weren't getting it. Mm. So Nicole, I'm wondering, you said that um, at the beginning, you said that there isn't always a lot of familiarity with autism, but we do sometimes see characters on TV and we develop these myths around what autism is or isn't. What might be a myth that you want to maybe debunk um, for us that we might all be expecting around autism? Well, the one that irritates me the most is the Rain Man one, obviously. You know, um, I always joke we took Jack to the casino and there was no good, he wasn't counting cards. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I think, look, all of those television shows are actually really helpful because it gets people to talk about autism and that's what I want people to do. But, you know, sometimes when the good doctor, the genius mm. doctor who can, you know, some of those things are, are kind of silly. But I'd really prefer we talk about it rather than not. So it's at least starting a conversation absolutely. that we can have a starting point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Autism is only scary if we treat it as mm. if it's something to be scared of. It's a condition. For some people, it can be really disabling. Mm. We kind of want to celebrate the autism but treat the disability. Mm. So get rid of the disabling aspects. Mm -hmm. I mean, all parents really want is for their children to grow up as independent as possible mm. of disability. And who gets autism? Who gets autism? And and is, is it something that happens in our pregnancies? Is it something that we can prevent? It's not something we can prevent and the answer is we still don't know. Mm. Um, there is a genetic likelihood underpinning all of this. It, if you have a child with autism, mm -hmm. you are more likely to have other children with autism, not necessarily guaranteed, but more likely. Um, so we know there's a genetic base, but we're a long way away from understanding whether other factors may come in into it. And I think, you know, for some people, the time, the age that it becomes kind of obvious that a baby is autistic is around 18 months to two years. Mm -hmm. So for a lot of parents, the babies are born with, you know, ten fingers and ten toes, it's all looking good, and then all of a sudden this comes out of seemingly nowhere um, and that they've got a problem and that this, this could be a problem that is going to be lifelong. So for parents who have just had their child diagnosed, what would you say the first steps they should take? Um, because obviously they're dealing with a lot themselves. Yeah, I, I think my first response is always breathe. Mm. <laughs> breathe and gird your loins and, and <laughs> get ready. Um, life's going to be different, but you know what? You, there are no guarantees in life with any of our children, regardless mm, yeah. of whether they're autistic or not. Mm. This is just a problem that's come a little early and we can see it and there are, there are sensible people yeah. and real solutions that can make a difference in your child's life. Yeah. You're just about to get very busy doing mm. it. Thank you so much, Nicole, for being here and sharing um, the insight on autism. Look, if you want more information on Autism Awareness Australia, visit autismawareness.com.au. Ladies, thanks for the chat and thank you for watching. Be sure to share, like and subscribe if you're watching us online because there's always room for more mums at the table. Until next time, God bless.